Hello, my name is Vance Mellon. I'm the screenwriter of a film called Just Let Go, which is uh, being released in theaters this week. It's October of 2015. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this film as the screenwriter because I don't live out in Utah where a lot of the press releases are happening and a lot of the events are going down. I'm out in Chicago and I'm very proud of this film and how it turned out and I had a really wonderful experience writing the screenplay. So I'd written a couple of shorts for Christopher Clark, the guy that uh, directed Just Let Go uh, along with Patrick Parker. Uh, he was curious about you know, long form writing that I'd done and he asked me if I had any longer screenplays. So I sent him several long screenplays I'd written because he, he hinted around that maybe there was something, a, a project on the horizon that he'd like me to be involved with. Uh, one of the, the screenplays I sent was kind of unusual because Chris works in a, in a kind of a churchy environment for his day job when he wasn't directing this film and I sent him a screenplay about a, a roller coaster, a killer roller coaster. Uh, next thing I know I thought, oh great, I, I'll probably never hear from him again. But next thing I know Christopher Clark calls me up and says, this is great man, this is kind of edgy and dark and a little bit uh, intense, I'm, I, we gotta talk. So we got together and he told me about the book that they would gotten the rights to. It's called Let It Go by Chris Williams. And I was very curious about the project. I was excited to be involved with it. And I really identified a lot with some of the things that Chris Williams had gone through and some of the trials that he'd gone through in his life. So I read the book carefully. Uh, the first time I just read it through without writing any notes, I just wanted to kind of get a feel of it. That oftentimes I'll watch a film that way. I'll just quickly watch the film, digest it, and not really think about how it's made or the structure of it, but then I'll go back and really dissect it. So I went back and started taking notes and tried to figure out how this uh, story could be turned into a good film. And uh, I also asked, did, did Chris, you know, did he have any journals or things that were even more intense that I could read because I didn't want to just totally reproduce the book. I wanted to add to the book, so to speak. Chris Williams gave me his journal, which was very kind of a rough version of the book itself. And I remember just tearing into that and I found all sorts of interesting things in there that were not in the book. So I had a great meeting with Chris Williams and I, I really, I had about 40 or 50 questions. So th for three or four hours, I just battered him with tough questions. You know, I wanted to know the, the true struggle that was entailed and him saying, I forgive this kid that crashed into my family and, you know, with, caused the death of my, my wife and unborn baby and two children. I mean, I really wanted to know what were his struggles. Yeah, you can say you forgive, but what did he really have to go through in order to eventually either achieve that or not achieve that, as you'll see when you watch the film. He said the words, but really struggled to fulfill the words. And I think as an artist and as a writer, that's the thing I was most interested in is his character arc, how he, what struggles he went through, what questions he asked. And as anyone that knows from, you know, dramatic writing, screenwriting, theater, film, you, you don't necessarily want to follow a hero that is always good. You want to see him go through some troubles, some trials, some traumas. Uh, and you want to see how he overcomes obstacles. So to me, the screenplay is definitely a faith-based film in the sense that it's very good for people that believe, but I'm also very interested in this film for people that don't necessarily believe in a God, uh, because a lot of the film to me is about the more universal questions that people ask in their lives. Questions like, well, is there a God, period? Where are you, God? Why aren't you revealing yourself and helping me out in this moment of crisis in my life? Uh, why aren't you communicating with me? Uh, other questions like, well, where is my father? You know, my father died 20 years ago and I went through a lot of questions and struggles trying to figure out, well, is he even there somewhere? I knew all the, the correct doctrinal answers. I knew all the scriptures about you know, life, death, heaven, resurrection, things like that. But, you know, the reality when someone actually passes away is very, it's, these are tough, difficult questions that we struggle with. I talked with Chris a bit in an interview about the anger he felt towards God, you know, uh, for taking a person's family away. I studied a lot about the seven stages of death. You know, there's a, there's a lot of stages that people go through 
when uh, someone dies. You know, there's shock and disbelief, denial, anger, which was a big aspect of this story. Uh, bargaining, where you're, you're just like, just give me some relief from this pain and I'll do this. There's a lot of guilt. Uh, Chris experienced a number of moments in the screenplay and in the film where he really struggled with, you know, was this my fault? How could I have prevented this accident? Maybe it was my fault. And some of the lawyers imply that maybe it's his fault and make him feel guilty for uh, the death of his family, actually. Then you go through a lot of depression, these sort of, we kind of almost start the film with Chris in just a funk. You know, he, he forgets to shave a half of his face, which is something that I experienced in my life, where you, you try to go about your daily routines, but you're in, in a lot of pain and you're in, a, uh, in another world of thought. And so it's very hard to, to just live a practical daily life. I was also really curious about post-traumatic stress disorder, um, which happens to a lot of people when they come back from war or from a very traumatic experience. Uh, I was walking home from a Mexican restaurant in Chicago and my wife and I were mugged by a guy with a knife. And it was pretty freaky. I mean, it kind of messed me up for about a year. I sort of felt this, this heightened sense of, of awareness. Sometimes I felt almost like I was a guardian angel or some sort of superhero that I couldn't be destroyed and that I could kind of watch over people that were in vulnerable situations and protect them. I don't know, a lot of those things were very interesting to me, that kind of some of the things that people go through with post-traumatic stress disorder. And having asked uh, Chris a lot of questions about it, you know, we talked a lot about uh, some of the risks that he took after the accident, risk-taking risk behavior, uh, you know, going for long drives at night in the middle of nowhere, fast speeds up into the mountains. And, and those things are depicted a bit in the film too, uh, kind of escaping into a, another uh, alternate uh, world where he could get away from his problems. I was also really interested in conversations with Chris. He said that it almost felt like there was a box in his mind where he can put the traumatic and difficult things that happened on the night of the accident and are surrounding the accident. And when he was prepared, able, and uh, ready, he could actually sort of open this box, which he described at a very specific location in his mind. He can almost sense it. And, and things could come out one by one for him to deal with. So we had a lot of box metaphors in the script. Uh, for example, he opens up his, his daughter's little jewelry box and it makes the kind of tinkling music um, when he goes into her bedroom, which in, in a sense is opening another box and going inside there to confront some of the, the horrors, just little piece at a time. And he talks about that in the voiceover and the screenplay. So all these aspects of him dealing with these traumas and troubles and trials that were a big part and a universal part of human existence were very interesting to me as a screenwriter. And his, the, the, I was very interested in the details, the, the very minute uh, details that would enrich the film and metaphors and symbols and things he saw that reminded him of his family and things that he would have to deal with uh, on a daily basis because of this accident. So after I was recruited to, to work on the screenplay by Christopher Clark and Patrick Parker, uh, we talked a lot, we struggled a lot, we wanted to make sure that the film was true, that the film was honest, that the film was full of struggles. We fought very hard not to make this a preachy film. I didn't want to convert anything or propagandize anything. Those were not things I was interested in accomplishing. I was much more interested in making more of an independent uh, film that would challenge people. So we tried to get rid of uh, any element of any particular religion. We tried to make it very non-denominational, yet still spiritual because it's a spiritual struggle like every good film should be. Every film should be a struggle of the soul. So if you're a non-religious person, don't be afraid to go and see this film. It's not going to try to brainwash you into any, any form of belief or disbelief or whatever. It's more about what we go through uh, as human beings when something really tough and traumatic happens in our lives. Uh, and the questions, the universal questions we ask about God, heaven, 
earth, trials, troubles, why do you know, bad things happen to good people? These are basically the questions that we're trying to deal with. We don't always answer them. A lot of times we just ask them. So I wanted to talk a few minutes about my process as a screenwriter. One thing I like to do is uh, I probably took a hundred naps writing this script because I would write, 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 and then I just would lay in the bed and think for a while and try to drift off to some state of half sleep. My dad was a psychiatric social worker at the VA and he talked a lot about theta waves, which are kind of the dreamlike half dream state waves that a lot of creative people uh, will have in their brain as they're creating things and seeing things and hearing things, which to me is what the script's all about. I lay there and I actually just kind of go into a half dream state, uh, half sleep, and I can actually, I try to actually see the film and hear the film. If I can't see it and hear it, it's very difficult to write it. It becomes very mushy. But I will see the scene in my head and then I'll quickly lean over to my side desk and I'll write a bunch of post-it notes about it. You know, I've got a ton of post-it notes that just from different things that I've written over the, over the months and years. This is for a new idea that I'm working on now. You know, I write out all these post-it notes in very kind of crazy, random order, almost like little snippets of dreams. So then what I would do is I'd take all these hundreds of post-it notes and I'd kind of group them together in categories. Like maybe one of them would be about uh, a sort of tempting, trying character at a 7-Eleven or other uh, uh, convenience store at 4 o'clock at night. What would this guy say to kind of egg Chris on? Who is this guy? Where does he come from? Uh, and I would write tons of, of ideas down about that character. And then I even go a little broader and I say, well, could this be an old man? Could it be a woman? Could it be a kid? Could it be, you know, Chris Williams himself? I ask tons and tons and tons of questions of myself, kind of, a, 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 they call it a lot of times dialectical materialism, where you're, you're thinking of an, a thesis and antithesis and then a synthesis. You, you just go back and forth asking lots of questions and come up with lots of possible answers and then eventually the cream kind of floats to the top. And then I will gather together posting notes and kind of tape them together in a long string and I'll move them around and I'll have kind of the beginning of the script, the beginning of the middle, the, the end of the middle, and then the end of the script and then I'll have a whole bunch of questions that I want to keep in mind like who is the villain, who is the audience, you know, uh, what is the budget, things like that. I'll, I'll constantly be asking those questions as I write. The other thing I do a lot as a writer, I think which helps me a lot, is I am a live storyteller. I like to tell stories, you know, to Cub Scouts, to, to schools, at museums, uh, at storytelling festivals, things like that. So as a storyteller, a live storyteller, a lot of times you get a good feel for, you know, when are you losing the audience, when are they interested, you know, and, and trying to improve the storytelling uh, by actually speaking it out loud. So if I were to give some advice to a new screenwriter, I would say make sure you just watch tons of movies. Movies you love, movies you hate, you know, old movies, new movies, uh, a lot of old silent movies can be wonderful to watch because it gives you a sense of how to tell a story without a lot of sound and dialogue, uh, without a lot of uh, voiceover, things like that. I know that's one way that Quentin Tarantino, for example, became such a famous filmmaker is he watched about a movie a day and studied a lot of films. Along with that, read some good screenplays, but I don't know if you need to read a ton of them. Read some new screenplays so you can see how they prefer their, the screenwriting structure in Hollywood. Uh, but primarily, I've learned over the years that I can either be producing or consuming. I can either be creating something or I can be you know, watching TV or watching a movie. So I, I encourage everyone to, to have a good balance between consuming and producing. Yeah, consume a lot, watch a lot of movies, but just get in and write every day a little bit. Uh, Stephen King, I, I think, is the best example of that. He sometimes just writes two hours a day. He'll write, uh, you know, just enough to kind of get some good things down, and then if he doesn't feel like writing, he'll actually go and rewrite for two hours a day, but look how prolific he is and how much he does over the course of all these years. I and mean, just sometimes a little bit every day is better than, you know, a binge write. So uh, I also suggest that you get a life. You know, read some newspapers, get out in the community, have some uh, jobs that 
allow you to interact with people other than just holding up in your room and writing, uh, find a way to meet all sorts of interesting and different people. You know, for me, I meet a ton of people at church. Uh, you know, I love to go on road trips and photograph things and I'll meet people that way or I'll, you know, I'll go to a lot of art, art galleries and meet other artists and things like that. So what's next for me? I, I would, I'm working on a graphic novel right now. It's uh, uh, going to be coming out probably in about a half year or so. I'm doing uh, tons of uh, paintings and, and drawings and, and f photographic images for it. So those are things I'm trying to put together now. I'm also looking for an agent, so if there's any agents out there watching, uh, I, I need an agent. That'd be awesome. Um, I do want to write more films. That's something that I'm working on all the time. Uh, hopefully I'll do another one with uh, Chris Clark and Patrick Parker here in this next year. Uh, we've been talking about some ideas. So um, I'd like to also work a little bit more in the theater, write a little bit of theater. These are some of my goals as a, as a screenwriter. Uh, that's what I'm up against. So hopefully uh, you will go and see this film. Uh, I'm very proud of how it turned out. I love it. I think that it's a very important film for a lot of different people to see and I think it can help people overcome some things that damn us in life, so to speak. Things that are like, they, they keep us from progressing, they keep us from moving on because we're always looking back. Uh, so if, if Chris Williams' story can help someone figure out how to forgive and move forward a little bit. I think that, to me, is a huge accomplishment. Uh, I'm much more interested in that than anything else in this world, is seeing some people uh, enjoy this film. And hopefully you'll go see it and enjoy it too. Thanks for watching.